Hi and welcome to this lecture on fetal position. To download my lecture deck, please go to my WordPress site, Dokina Obigaine. Here are the references for this lecture. Here, here is the outline of my lecture. So first we talk about fetal attitude. Fetal attitude is actually the fetal posture or habitus. And this refers to the relationship of the fetal head to the fetal back or extremities. And this picture that you see on the right is what we call universal flexion. As a rule, the fetus forms an ovoid mass that corresponds roughly to the shape of the uterine cavity. So the fetus becomes folded or bent upon itself, as you can see in this picture, in such a manner that the back becomes markedly convex. So the head is sharply flexed so that the chin is almost in contact with the chest. The thighs are also flexed over the abdomen and the legs are bent at the knees. So this is a picture showing to you that the head is flexed. Okay, so you see that the chin of the baby is uh, almost in contact with the chest and this is a picture of a fetal head that is extended meaning the head is um, bent towards the back next is we have fetal lie fetal lie is actually the relationship of the long axis of the fetus to the long axis of the maternal abdomen so in this case here in this picture here we have longitudinal lie so the fetal uh, long axis is along the long axis of the mother okay so on the right we have a transverse lie where you see that the fetal long axis is perpendicular to the long axis of the mother and this is the oblique lie where the the long axis of the fetus is about 45 degrees deviated from the long axis of the mother Next term is the fetal presentation. This is the portion of the body of the fetus that is foremost within the birth canal or in closest proximity to it. So presentation could be cephalic, breech, shoulder, or compound. For the cephalic presentation, we have four different subtypes. We have the vertex or occiput presentation, the sensiput or military presentation, the brow presentation and the face presentation. So for the vertex or occiput presentation, the occipital fontanel is the one presenting in the birth canal. For the face presentation, of course, it's the uh, face of the fetus that is foremost in the birth canal. So in these cases, the fetal neck may be sharply extended so that the occiput and back come in contact. The sensiput presentation is when the fetal head is partially flexed with the anterior or the large fontanet or bregma presenting uh, nearest the birth canal. And then lastly, we have the brow presentation where the fetal head is partially extended with the brow presenting near the birth canal. So next is we have the breech presentation. So we have three kinds of breech. We have the complete breech where you see that the legs are, both legs are actually flexed at the hips and the, both knees are flexed also. And you can see here the incomplete breech where both legs are flexed at the hips and then only one uh, leg is bent at the knee and the other one is extended. And then you have the front breech where you have both legs ex uh, flexed at the level of the hips and then you have the legs extended at the knee level. We also have shoulder presentation where the shoulder or acromion is presenting into the pelvic inlet. Compound presentation is when the fetal hand or foot prolapses alongside the presenting vertex or breech. Next is fetal position, and this is the relationship of the chosen portion of the fetal presenting part in reference to one of the four quadrants or transverse diameter of the birth canal. So in this, um, in this uh, fetal position, we have to make um, four quadrants no, in this pelvic cavity. So assume an imaginary uh, line okay, or a cross drawn over the pelvic cavity so that you will have four quadrants. 
Okay, so this is a clear picture of what we meant as dividing the pelvic cavity into imaginary quadrants. Okay, we have four quadrants here. So, this is the anterior here because this is where the symphysis pubis is. This is posterior because this is where the sacrum is. This is the maternal left and the maternal right. Okay, so this since this fetus is in a um, occiput presentation, so our marker will be the occipital or posterior fontanelle. So note here that the posterior fontanelle is directed towards this direction. Okay, so when you're asked the fetal position, this uh, will be left occiput anterior. Okay, so if the occipital fontanel is directed towards this area that will be left occiput transverse when the occipital fontanel is pointing to this area or to this, this direction that's left occiput posterior this will be occiput posterior right occiput posterior right occiput transverse right occiput anterior and occiput anterior okay so let's practice Okay, so before we go into the practice session, so remember when determining the fetal position, your perspective is uh, you are facing the vaginal area of a patient who is lying down on the delivery table. Okay, and you as the examiner or the obigyne or the obstetrician who will deliver the baby, you are facing the vaginal area. Okay, so that's your perspective. Okay, so now let's practice. Okay, so this one, so this is the occipital fontanelle that's pointing towards this direction. So this is the left, oh, this is the left side of the mother. This is the right side of the mother. And we know this is anterior because this is where the symphysis pubis is. This is posterior because this is where the sacrum is. Okay, so in this case, since the occipital fontanelle is pointing towards this direction so this will be left occiput anterior all right for the next picture here so you have the occipital fontanelle pointing in this direction okay so that would be left occiput posterior okay for this picture here on the left you have the occipital fontanelle pointing in this direction Therefore, the answer here will be right occiput posterior. And finally, for the last picture, you have the occipital fontanel pointing in this direction, okay, at about the 9 o'clock position. So this will be right occiput transverse. Okay, so that is the case where the fetus is at an is in a cephalic presentation, particularly the occiput presentation. Okay, so what if the patient, or sorry, the baby or the fetus is in a different presentation, say a face presentation or a breech presentation or even a shoulder presentation? Okay, so if the baby or the fetus is in a face presentation, then your marker will be the mentum or the chin. If the baby is in a breech presentation, then your marker will be the sacrum. If the baby is in a shoulder presentation, then your marker will be the acromion or the scapula. Okay, so let's practice so that you will understand this better. Okay, so obviously, this is a fetus in a face presentation because you can see the face in this drawing. Okay, so this one... Since this is in a face presentation, your marker will be the chin or mentum. So in this case, we have left mentum anterior. Okay. So what is the fetal position in this next picture? Knowing that the chin or the mentum is pointing towards this direction. It's right mentum anterior. And finally, we have right mentum posterior since the chin in this picture is pointing posteriorly and towards the right. Now in this picture here, we have a fetus in a transverse lie and the scapula is presenting. So this is 
the shoulder presentation. So our marker here will be the acromion. So this is right dorsal acromion. Okay, so in this presentation, we have breech. Okay, so again, what's the marker when the, when the baby is in the breech presentation? It should be the sacrum. Okay, so in this case, this is the sacrum. Okay, that's pointing towards this direction. How do I know that this is the sacrum? Because it is nearer the curvature of the uh, buttocks. Okay, so this will be the sacrum in this, uh, given in this drawing. So in this case, the fetal position will be left sacroanterior. Next picture shows us a fetal position of left sacrotransverse because the sacrum is pointing towards the 3 o'clock position. And the last would be left sacroposterior. Okay, there are several methods that can be used to diagnose fetal presentation in position. Okay, so first will be, of course, abdominal palpation using the Leupold's maneuvers, which I will uh, teach you no, in the latter part of this lecture. Second is a vaginal examination. We can also use auscultation. Of course, we can use ultrasound. And rarely do we use plain radiographs or computed tomography. With the onset of labor and after cervical dilatation, the vertex presentations and their positions are recognized by palpation of the various fetal sutures and fontanelles. The face and breech presentations are identified by palpation of facial features and the fetal sacrum. So, how do we do vaginal examination? So, first, the examiner inserts two fingers into the vagina. And the presenting part is found, so such as this scene in this picture. Now, the second, if the vertex is presenting, then the fingers are directed posteriorly and then swept upwards or forward over the fetal head towards the maternal symphysis pubis. Next, the positions of the two fontanelles are ascertained. Fingers are passed to the most anterior extension of the sagittal suture. Okay, and the fontanel encountered there is examined and identified. With the sweeping motion, the fingers pass along the suture to the other end of the head until the other fontanel is felt and differentiated. So when doing vaginal examination, we can also determine the fetal station. So how do we determine fetal station? We actually do that by assigning arbitrary numbers in the birth canal with zero set at the level of the ischial spines. So if the fetal head or the biparietal diameter of the fetal head is at the level of the ischial spines, we call that station zero. So anything above station zero will be negative one to negative five. And anything above or level of the fetal head below station zero will be assigned positive one to positive five. So now let's discuss Leupold's maneuvers. Leupold's maneuver is actually abdominal exam to determine the fetal presentation. So we have four types of Leupold's maneuvers. So first, we have Leupold's maneuver one. This is also called the fundal grip. So, you, so what do we do here? So the examiner's hands or both hands are placed on the fundus of the uterus. Okay, so our objective here is to know which fetal part is occupying the uterine fundus. Okay, so if you feel or if the examiner feels a round, hard, balotable mass, then uh, most probably uh, the fetal head is presenting in the uterine fundus. However, if the examiner feels a large nodular mass, as in this um, picture right here, then we report LM1 as breach because it is the breach that actually is situated in the uterine fundus. Okay, so in this picture, we report this as LM1 breach. Next is Leupold's maneuver 2 or the umbilical grip. So as you can see here, we slide down or the examiner slides down both her hands coming from the uterine fundus to the sides of the uterus, okay, on either side of the uterus. Okay, so what's the objective here? So we have to palpate the paraumbilical areas or the sides of the uterus to look for the fetal back. 
Okay, so we want to know which side of the maternal abdomen is the fetal back. Okay, so if if you feel a hard resistant convex structure, then that's the fetal back. If you feel nodular irregular parts, then that will be the fetal small parts. Now, what is the importance of determining the fetal back or where the fetal back is? Of course, it's very important because that is where we will put our stethoscope or Doppler so that we can appreciate the fetal heartbeat okay, and determine the fetal heart rate. Okay. The third Dupuls maneuver is what we also call as the Paulic script. Okay, this is the suprapubic palpation. Okay, using the thumb and the fingers just above the symphysis pubis, and the objective here is to determine fetal presentation and station. Okay, you want to know which part of the fetus is nearest the birth canal. Okay, so. If the presenting part is not engaged, then a movable structure can be palpated. However, if the fetus is already engaged, then it will be uh, hard for you to do Leupold's Maneuver 3. Okay, so the last Leupold's Maneuver is Leupold's Maneuver 4 or LM4, which is also called the pelvic grip. So notice in the first three Leupold's Maneuvers, the examiner was facing the patient or the face of the mother. This time, in Leupold's Maneuver 4, the examiner will be facing the patient's feet. Okay, so this is the palpation of the bilateral lower quadrant to so determine the engagement of the fetal presenting part. So, the examiner runs both her hands on either side of the abdomen of the mother and then slides it down uh, simultaneously towards the symphysis pubis or the middle part. Okay, so if the fetal presenting part is already engaged, then the examiner's hands will diverge. Now, if the fetal head is not yet engaged, then the examiner's hands will converge in the middle or will meet in the middle. Another objective of Leupold's Maneuver 4 is to determine whether the fetal head is flexed or extended. If the fetal head is felt on the same side, as the fetal back, then we know that the fetal head is extended. Okay, so that's the end of our lecture. Uh, in summary, we have discussed uh, these different terms such as the fetal attitude, fetal lie, transverse and longitudinal, and of course oblique, fetal presentation such as cephalic, breech, compound, and shoulder, the diff uh, how to determine the fetal position, and lastly, the Leupold's Maneuvers. Thank you for watching this lecture.